All righty, we are going to get started. Um, so welcome everyone to the Maximize Your Success in Sport Management virtual event. Um, my name is Jane. I work in the Office of Admissions. Um, I also have Dawson here with me from admissions, and then we're also happy to welcome uh, Mark Vermillion, the interim dean and professor for sport management, and then Brett Farrar, um, who is a WSU senior and sport management major. Um, so they are going to take it away. I also wanted to let you guys know as well, um, we will be recording this event, so just so, so y'all are aware, and if you haven't yet, go ahead and change your Zoom name to your first and last name. And then Mark and Brett, y'all are good to take it away. Well, thank you again. I uh, appreciate admissions taking the time to put this on, and I, I appreciate the, all of you all for tuning in. You know, what we really wanted to do was just kind of have a, a conversation about, you know, sport management, who we are, and what we do with the idea that, you know, as you're able to think about potentially sport, the sport industry as a, as a career opportunity, these are going to be some things that we do to try to prepare our students uh, to be successful in a, in a really rapidly changing and ever-evolving industry. So, and then we have Brett, who's going to be Who's really the talent of this whole thing. So you'll be able to ask a student directly what their experience has been like, what are the things that they wish they had had, you know, those types of things. So to kind of just give a little context of who we are and what we do, this is normally, you know, if we were meeting in person and we just had kind of a traditional PowerPoint, I would sit there and we'd have a conversation, right? And we'd say, you know, what is this? What is your favorite sport? What do you see in this particular picture? And the reason we kind of start with that is lots of times, um, people that are interested in sport management or working in the sport industry tend to have a very close relationship with sport. They're very excited about it, right? And that's a great jumping off point for talking about how to get involved in a very competitive industry. And so I usually just ask people, what do you see in this picture? And most of the people tend to focus on you know, the baseball players and those types of things. That's when we think about sport, we think of the entertainment factor. And that's what really draws our eye. Well, kind of what we're going to talk about for sport management and what we do is actually everything else in this picture besides the people that the athletes that you see. So up here you have Under Armour. So you're looking at sponsorships and naming rights. You're looking at this entire facility. You're looking at all of these different fans and be able to create that fan atmosphere or that fan experience. That's really what sport management is. And that's kind of as we start thinking about how to prepare our students, that's the basic context is sport is, at least in terms of how we think about it, how we try to prepare our students, sport management is everything that you hopefully kind of don't notice at a sporting event, right? That means we're doing our job and we're doing it really well because you're focused on the game, you're focused on your favorite player, or if, or if you know people that are involved in the event, or you know, it, maybe you're just there for the tailgating or the social atmosphere. You want to enjoy that experience. And our job is to prepare you to do that. All right. So we do that through this sport management major. And this major really it encompasses a lot of different things. And I'm not going to try to bore you with a whole bunch of details. But sport management is sport business and then a whole bunch of social sciences all kind of working together. Right. So you're going to have uh, classes, or you're going to deal with concepts that are marketing, you're going to deal with some revenue management, human resources, being able to work with people in the organization. But you're going to have to know about psychology, sociology, economics, you know, communication, that's going to be really, really key as well. And then we we start talking about maybe the actual facility, think about the picture I just showed you, you know, managing people at a large event or managing a facility like that, it comes with a lot of risk, it comes with a lot of there's a need for a lot of different types of knowledge. And so what we try to do is a lot of disciplines um, start off with, let's say, engineering, right? And you learn the basics of engineering, and then you become maybe a chemical engineer, or you get involved in testing textiles and those types of things. Well, we sort of flip the model. And sport in this industry is our starting point. And then we think about all the different aspects uh, and, and disciplines and ideas that can really help us understand and better prepare people to work in this very, very unique industry. So if that's what sport management is, where is sport management occurring? And for us, again, 
you know, we just kind of fall back on our experiences, but you can talk about professional sports. We have a lot of individuals going to be involved in all different aspects of professional sports, whether it's major league, minor league sports, but then we also have intercollegiate athletics. Uh, college sports is really, really what we call highly variegated, right? What's that mean? Division one, division two. Within division one, you've got FBS and FCS. You've got the NAIA. You've got the NJ NJCAA, if we're thinking about um, our community college partner. So you've got a lot of different layers and different tiers within intercollegiate athletics. High school sports, that's what many of you are, are probably actively involved in scholastic athletic associations right now. So you're you're involved in high school sports. But then we also have a lot of students that go and they're involved in different aspects of health, fitness, and recreation. So if we think about, you know, running something like the YMCA, a lot of people think of, oh, well, that I, I don't want to be a personal trainer. Uh, well, that's okay. You know, think about the YMCA. You've got business aspects going on in the YMCA. They're working with the community. You have these large facilities. You're hosting a lot of events. So all of these different things, that's where, when, when we talk about where sport management, it occurs in all these different areas. And we've been lucky enough to have graduates and students currently that are working in all these different types of venues. These are just, and, and I know, you know, this is kind of a rough looking slide, but these are just a whole bunch of places um, where our students have either worked or are currently working. And we just try to segment it out to show you that there's a lot of different opportunity in college sports. There's a lot of different opportunity in recreation, professional sports, all those different types of things. This is a very, very flexible degree. And it allows you, hopefully, to basically learn the foundational skills that it takes to be successful in a lot of different industries. How do we manage this whole sport or sport industry or sport management here at WSU? A couple of different things. We're COSMA accredited. That's a big deal. I know a lot of people don't necessarily like to talk about that. That's fine. Uh, but, but really what accreditation is, the Commission on Sport Management Accreditation says, you know what, that's a good program and they're training their students the way that they're supposed to be trained. This is a great opportunity. Every year we go through the COSMA accredit accreditation process and, it, and it's really just a way to put our money where our mouth is. And when we say we're trying to prepare students to be successful, we have to document that, okay? You know, the other thing that's we're really proud of is we we are a department of sport management. We have a bachelor's degree in undergrad sport management degree, and then we have a graduate degree in sport management. And it's it's taught by all people that just work within our specific department, not impugning or criticizing other programs across the United States, but oftentimes sport management is embedded in a in a PE or a kinesiology or exercise science program or something like that. And those are great programs, but we're really excited because we are separated, we're our own department. So therefore we have faculty, staff and students that this is what they do every single day, all day. Another thing is that we're really big on trying to make sure that you've got the technical skills, right? So you understand what's called the consumer escalator in marketing or, or something like that. It's, it's ways to be immediately successful, but then you also have your, your interpersonal or your soft skills. And we really develop those um, with getting outside the classroom. As much as, you know, books are nice and, and, and the classroom is a great environment for us, for our industry and for our students, what's, what's best is to get out to those sporting events. Make sure that you're working different football games, basketball games. If you're here locally and you you work the Prairie Fire Marathon or so, things like that, right? Being able to take that applied learning and, and get outside the classroom and, and really see what people are doing, engage with the workforce and be a part of everything that we're doing. These are just a couple of, the next few slides are just kind of examples of applied learning. Um, so this was a years and years ago, we had um, ESPN's men's college basketball game day, and they came to Wichita and they, and they were over in Cochrane and all that kind of stuff. When they came here, uh, largely in part due to a social media campaign that our undergraduate sport PR class did for two years, and we were able to catch their eye, they realized, okay, what's going on at WSU? This is pretty cool. We'll take what the kids in sport management are doing. We'll take the fact that we had a really good basketball team at the time. And they they relocated their uh, their entire game day 
group to campus in Coker Arena. It was a really cool event. These are just some of the students that were touring the bus after they were able to, to help get ES ESPN on campus. And this is us just working. Um, couple of us work in a local golf tournament here in town. You know, the idea really is about getting out, making sure that you're doing whatever needs to be done. Um, a couple of years ago, we took students up to Sporting KC and we had we we did a couple of matches up there. And really what what we did was the students actually worked for Sporting KC. And then once um, the the match began, then they got to go in and, you know, enjoy the kind of the fruits of their labor and, and enjoy the game and all that kind of stuff. Here's locally at, at some of the baseball tournaments, the NBC tournaments, those types of things. And then these are just a, a, just a group of other students and where they've been interning, what they've been doing. The thing that's really important for us is, you know, as you're going through the, the story arc of your undergrad program, like I said before, classes are really important. They, they truly are. You know, that's where you're able to to acquire some of that technical knowledge that you're going to need to be successful. Um, but also what's really important for us is being able to sort of learn on the job, learn outside the classroom and make sure that you're applying everything that you learned in the classroom in a real world situation and setting. This is just the, the office here. And we like to we like to talk about it just so that people know that we actually exist. You know, sometimes when you when you do these presentations, you kind of lose sight of the fact that you know, we're, we're a department, we actually have people, we have places, we try to support you all in terms of whatever it is that you're going to be doing. The, over here on the left was just, um, we had a, a group that was study abroad, and so they went to South Korea, and these are all the pictures from when they were in South Korea, and they were, they were highlighted at a, a Korean professional baseball game and some of those different types of things. Really, what's important for us is learning, and the way that you do that is through a variety of experiences. And there's no one way or right or wrong way to have an experience to really maximize the, the college or the university experience. But it's that you're understanding who you are, what you're doing, and where you want to go. Because ultimately, our job is just to support students and provide you all with the information that's going to be useful for you, um, and then to, to serve as a resource. Uh, it's really, you know, when we're talking about two, three, four, five years, depending on whatever your story is and whatever your journey is like, you know, that's that's what we're there to do is to support you through that whole process. So now what we're going to do, these are just some questions, but we'll go ahead and stop sharing so you don't you don't need to look at those those questions or anything like that. Really, what we want to do, we're going to turn over to Brett. He's going to talk a little bit about, you know, his story, uh, who he is some of his experiences and things like that. But I, what I really recommend you all do, listen to Brett, but also ask questions. You know, this is a great opportunity to talk with someone who is currently in the program, who's going to be going through whatever it is that you all are dealing with, both in terms of, you know, going to college in general, but trying to figure out what you want to do with the rest of your life, all those different decisions, all those different things that you're having to juggle. Brett is currently doing those. So, listen to him, make sure you use him as a resource and ask good questions. And if there's anything I can answer, um, I'm always happy to do that as well. So thank you again for tuning in. And Brett, I'll just kick it over to you and let you talk for a little bit. Yeah, of course. Well, th thank you for getting us started. Um, and I want to say thank you all for coming out tonight. Appreciate it. But I'm, I'll just kind of introduce myself, kind of tell you where I came from and all my experiences with um, Wichita State Sport Management. So here, I'll get started. Um, like my name tag says, my name is Brett Farrar. I'm um, originally from Phoenix, Arizona. Um, and so when I was kind of back in high school, I was kind of looking to, looking to do something different. Didn't really know what I wanted to do yet. I've always, I grew up around sports going, being from Arizona. I was everything Arizona. So going to the Phoenix Suns games, going to Arizona Diamondbacks. And it was kind of just a way for, for me to connect with like my family go to the events with friends it's, it was always just a social social thing always created good memories and so I, I I wanted that to be something a part of for the rest of my life and so I kind of decided I'm going to look for look for schools and the schools that had it back home were just too close and I kind of wanted to challenge myself and I know it was kind of scary not knowing anyone coming out here but I came to do a tour of the campus and um, I, it just felt right. I got to talk with, with people in the sport management organization, people in the admissions office, and it just, it just felt like 
it was going to be something different, but it was a challenge that I was willing to take on and get started. And so um, one thing that kind of stood out to me, just talking with with the professors and um, and all and everyone involved was just how how dedicated they were to the students. It's I mean, your class, your classes are going to be 20 to 20 to 30 students, some even smaller than that. And so there's just involvement from all. So like students are going to be involved. You're going to you're going to get to work hand in hand with students and group projects and get to get to work on your own and do projects yourself and kind of learn, learn more about yourself and kind of learn um, working with others as well. And and those those professors are willing to always help um, with with how this class sizes work out to be the so don't be afraid to ask kind of learn that from the start of oh i'm just going to go through the motions and then realize that they are there and it's easy to contact them and they're willing so um and then with that i when i got here i was like i need to do something so i was like how am i going to get involved i think that's that's one of the biggest things and you can just go through go through college and go to class or even just kind of go through the motions but i wanted to do be a part of something different so i got started um working in the intramural department as a referee and that kind of kind of sparked um working in sports a little bit more for me um and then i continued on through that program i also um was taking part in one of our um, town halls with our president um, who came to speak to our college to all of our sport management students um and he I got to chatting with him after and he was like, let me put you in contact with somebody in the athletic department and we can get you working at games. And it was just, it was just nice to, to know that at WSU, they, they really kind of make an effort for you, whether it's somebody in your department or just some, somebody on staff, they're all always willing to make that effort to help at the end of the day, like the hashtag said, WSU SMGT family, that's what we are here. Um, and so, that set me up for some great experiences working on game days and being a part of the um, athletic department. And then I also, um, one big thing that kind of stood out when I was looking at WSU was the, um, to graduate, you have to, they want you to get experiences. So like Mark was showing that there was all these internships. And so one of um, my internships that I recently completed back in, I went from February all the way in, up until September. So I was done about a month ago. Um, I was the promotions intern for the Wichita Wind Surge. If you're not familiar with Wichita, the Wind Surge are a double A affiliate um, for the Minnesota Twins uh, baseball. And so I was the promotions intern. I got to do so many different cool things. I got to kind of see the skills that I learned in all of my classes, all every, every different aspect. Um, and then there's some things you just get to learn on the job that gets you great experience and the relationships you build um, with with coworkers. They're always willing to to help you out in the long run if you're if you're looking to find a position in the professional sports. There's somebody that knows somebody out there that they're they're willing to contact for you. Um, so I think the biggest thing um, is just getting involved. I mean, you can go through the motions of being a college student or you can get out there and and just make the most of your opportunity. Um, I got to actually be a part of a WSU sport management trip as well to Indianapolis where we got to take in a, in a sport management conference and do a little presentation, um, creating a project for a future March Madness event. And so it was just like, there's got to work with different students that I met and kind of built those relationships and get still in, in contact with those students. So there's so many people that going from a little high schooler that didn't really know where he was wanting to go in life. And then I uh, was able to come out here and meet so many um, cool people and um, starting out with our professors that to make those efforts and just your classmates that you're, you're involved with every day. I got to and now I have these relationships that I'm able to utilize of, of my buddies that have gone off to work in different teams. I know I can always call on them if, if I need some advice with, or just even the experiences that I got, the staff that I got to be a part of. Um, I know they're always willing to make an effort. So I know that was probably pretty long for you, but uh, I just wanted to kind of give my background of it was being someone that didn't really know 
Um, and then now you guys are already doing a good job coming out, listening to what we have to say, getting involved. And so um, I'm open to any questions. If you guys want to ask them in the chat or kind of turn your mic on, just me and Mark are here to answer some questions. I have a quick question. <clears throat> um, as far as, um, so I'm going to be a, a transfer student. So I'll be a junior coming in um, this next year. As far as your junior year, what did you like start out doing like internships or were you still taking like normal classes as well? Um, yeah, so usually you save your internship um, towards the end. So you also have to complete a practicum, which is similar to an internship where you have to get a certain amount of hours working um, in a sport related field. And so I was able to kind of work with that working in the um, intramural department, I was able to kind of use that as my experience. I was moved on into a, a sport leader role is what they called it. And so I was basically just like a ship manager for all of the intramural supports working football, basketball, volleyball, pickleball. Um, and so um, you have to, that is one aspect that kind of gets you experience as well. I might also jump in here real quick. Um, Tyler, about 60 to 70 percent of the students that come into the program um, are bringing transfer hours with them. So we have a lot of students that are in the, the exact same position. And so what we have, we're, we're lucky enough, uh, we're, we're a pretty small department, but we have a dedicated academic advisor. And so that's actually Mika's entire, Mika Moss is her name. And that's her job is to, to really help you make sure that you're able to balance like your practicum and internship and classes, then everything transfers to WSU and, and you get maximum credit for everything. So we do have a resource there just in case. As far as sports management being a major, is there also a way to minor in sports, man sports management? There is. We have a sport management minor. So Dakota, you know, we have um, we have about 160 uh, undergraduate students majoring in sport management, but we have about 50 students that are minoring in sport management as well. And so anything that we do in the department is open to all majors and minors. I mean, we just this semester we had an all majors and minors meeting. So anyone that was majoring or minoring in sport management could come meet the faculty, get some food. Uh, and then we had kind of a, a sort of a kickoff celebration to start the semester. But yes, it's a, it's a very common, um, pretty popular minor as well. Joseph's asking, can you combine classes from the School of Business with a degree in sports management? Um, yes. I mean, a lot of that depends on kind of how you want to approach it. Um, but, you know, let's say you wanted to um, major in sport management and then minor in marketing or business administration or something like that. Or you can flip it. Maybe you wanted to major in, you know, management and then minor in sport management. The, they they they're very complimentary. They work well together. Um, and that's and really this is the reason we have Mika as the dedicated advisor, because what she does is she makes sure that you have all of what we call prereqs. So all the classes taken so that you can do whatever it is that you want to do, you know, whether it's in the in the business school or with us in sport management. I will kind of chime in on my experience with that. I'm also a communications um, minor, so got to be a part of a whole different college department. Um, got to, I had had to work in some of my classes of sport management classes and also balancing communication. So um, it definitely works um, and then I got to experience that. All righty, any other questions? I have one more question. For the intern practic 
practicum, does that include like classes or is that separate? That's complete, like different from classes? Well, it it's a class you enroll in, but you don't go to class like a regular class, if that makes sense. Um, you work with a faculty advisor, yes, but you know, Brett was, you know, working on campus, working in athletics, and that constitutes his class for that for that particular semester or those couple of classes. Because that's the other thing is our internship, it's like taking um four classes in terms of you know the credit that you receive and those types of things, but you don't go to four classes on Monday, Wednesdays, or Tuesday, Thursdays, or anything like that. They're going to be those applied learning opportunities where you you intern or you get that credit, and that credit counts as class credit. I don't know if that kind of makes sense, or I don't know if you have any other follow-up questions, feel free to let me know. Oh, it says, can, can you share some of the backgrounds of the faculty? Yes, I can actually do that. Um, and this is something I, I should have mentioned. You know, one of the things that's really uh, kind of cool about our faculty and my job is really just to kind of brag on, on what they do and those types of things is every single one of them um, works in the industry. So, you know, when Brett's talking about going to Indianapolis, you know, Dr. Kim uh, has connections all around the world. He took a group of students to South Korea, and he's got in, he's got friends that that work in different companies all over the all over the world. Whether it's things kind of like Top Top Golf or or they're involved in esports, just a lot of different connections. Um, Mike Ross, uh, if, if if you remember here in town, we hosted um, the men's or women's March Madness a few times. And so actually some of the people um, that were that took part in that event actually teach in our department. So Mike Ross headed up all the communications for the, the any of the March Madness events. Um, Dr. Jeff Noble is involved every year with Division II swimming and diving championships and hosting those events. And then he goes and, and judges. You know, most recently he was in Birmingham, Alabama. And, and so he's he's actively involved as well. Uh, Dr. Bobby Berry does does a lot, a lot of work. Uh, he actually, one of the things he did locally was work with uh, the wind surge, the minor league baseball team that Brett was talking about. And they he did some professional development and some programming for the staff of the wind surge. So all of all of our faculty are, are actively involved in and not just, you know, sometimes people say, oh, well, they're just teaching, not just teaching. They take their experience and that is what they're bringing to the classroom. And then finally, we're just we're super lucky that um, we have the opportunity to have a number of adjuncts that work with our department as well. So these are individuals, these are professionals that work in the industry uh, every single day, all day. And then they take like their lunch hour and then they come and teach a class for us. So, you know, Brad Pittman's a great example. He's the associate athletic director of WSU Athletics, and he comes and teaches our, our sport law class. Or, you know, when Brett was over in working in uh, intramurals and he, he came across John Lee, who is who runs the Heskett Center. Well, uh, the Heskett Center is like one of the campus recreation facilities that we have on campus. Well, he also teaches our facility management class. So those those are kind of some of the things that we try to do. Um, all the faculty, whether full time or part time, are actively involved in the industry, and, and that's something that's really really important to us. See, Blake just asked a question. Um, so I would I wouldn't I wouldn't shy down from from getting that experience. Anything to kind of get you get you started. Um, um, it's, it might be a little bit of adjustment um, with getting getting in the rhythm of school. I know it could be it's going to be a little bit different. I know for me, for me, I never had Friday classes, and so it was like very different from high school. Sometimes instead of going from class eight to three or four every day, I was might have a nine thirty class to and then a noon class, and I was I was done for the day. So. Um, it's definitely something that you can you can make work if you're if you're willing to willing to put in the effort. Um, I th that's one thing that I kind of learned going throughout the whole story management of just starting out. I was just like, oh, I'm going to just go through the rhythms of college and that be it. And then 
realized, oh, I need to get involved with with this and and that. And so I think it it all depends on how hard you're willing to give an effort, um, especially starting out. Um, you'll kind of ease your way into the sport management. It depends a little bit on on what credits. So you start out well with an intro class, and so um, it's kind of a good way to get your feet in the water um, into the sport management program and balance balance a job for sure. You know, I might tag on something there as well. Is we we just as a department we just entered a a partnership with Teamwork Online, which is the largest repository. It's almost like Indeed right? Indeed.com um, for internships and jobs in sport. And so we just entered into a three-year partnership with them. And actually, a, as kind of a, a gift to our students, we just paid for what they call MVP access. So they got free subscriptions for this semester uh, for being just majors in, in sport management. So, you know, as, as kind of Brett was saying is, if you put in the effort, we are most definitely going to make sure that we support you and try to provide you resources and opportunities. You know, if, if you're just getting on campus, maybe you don't know a lot of people. That's OK. That's what your your student colleagues and that's what we're here for. So um, take advantage of the, the resources around you. Um, one of the things that Brett's been able to do is it doesn't take any money to work hard and be creative and kind of tap into the things that are around you. You know, you'll have, um, you know, Bobby or Jeff teaching a, a, an intro to sport management class. Well, the, these folks are really connected and locked in, you know, just coming and speaking to them after class. That's a great low cost way to just start meeting people. And then from there, you know, it, it, it provides you the opportunity. So again, just a couple different things. That's that's what the 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 older students, they they want to give back. They They like the idea of mentoring, but that's also I mean, that's literally my job is to make sure that we provide support and resources for students that want to want to be a part of the industry. I think kind of touching on what he finished up saying there was as well, like the like I kind of mentioned earlier too, like with the classes being so small, like that's one thing that stood out the teachers were willing. So I, if you're if you're up front and communicating, well, I have I have this um, event that I'm trying to work in sports um is there something I could do for for class to kind of work around say maybe you might have an event you need to work for a sporting event but you might have class or some homework um the sport management professors are very understanding um and willing to work with you is one thing that I really appreciate going through it all as well So looking here at the chat, um, we do tend to have a, a number of, of student athletes that major in sport management uh, or minor in sport management as well. And then we also have a, a good portion of our student population that maybe they're not participating in sports now, but they were actively involved at the varsity level. They were actively involved in high school. And, and there's still a lot of people that, I mean, we even had an intramural team here in the department for a while. So that's something that's still kind of at the, the core for a lot of our students. And then can you do study abroad for sport management? Yes, you can. Um, that's we we took a number of students to South Korea for a few years in a row. Then this, this you know, global pandemic hit and kind of shut that down, but it is definitely on our radar to start looking at different venues uh, across the world so that we can get folks involved a little bit more. Because that, I mean, for us, the thing that's pretty cool is that sport is global. Um, I mean, we have you know, kind of sporting infrastructures here in the United States that we're we're pretty excited about. But um, there's there's a whole different sporting landscape, a sportscape, if you will, um, outside the heck outside of Wichita, outside of Kansas, outside the United States. There's just a whole lot out there. And uh, so, yes, you can do a study abroad in sport management. All right, any other questions? All right, doesn't look like there's any more questions coming through. Um, so just last chance to ask questions before we sign off. Um, 
But thank you everyone for attending this event and to Mark and Brett for being here um, and talking to y'all about sports management. Um, if y'all have any further questions, um, you can email us in admissions or I'm sure Mark and Brett, um, if y'all wanna also drop your contact information in the chat um, so they can email y'all as well. But thanks everyone for attending today. Thank you all, have a good night.